Hey everybody, Calvin Nation here with another video for you. In today's video, we're going to be talking about balisongs. As you can see, I have my balisong drawer open. I have my knife case open because we are doing a new updated version of which balisong should you buy, 2013 style. So, um, last time I did this, I believe, was uh, summer of 2011. Some things have changed, not a whole lot. In fact, probably 80% of what I'm going to talk about was already answered in my last uh, which ballast song should you buy of 2011 and one thing I should add is the date I didn't do this in my last video today's date is the March <laughs> the March 2nd of 2013 um, just so you guys are watching in the future whatever a year from now two years from now um, just so you know what time frame this is so things might be changed in a year or two years from now but uh, Still watch through the whole video because likeliness is that things haven't really changed that much. Um, but yeah, also check the description if you're watching this in the future or actually even now just uh, so you know what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Um, I'm going to put links to the time um, of each part of the video where I answer the questions. So I'll just write like uh, two minutes, we're going to start talking about Chimera or whatever. At three minutes, it'll be Chimera versus 51. You'll see it. I have all these questions I'm going to be answering here. So uh, check the description for your questions you might have. So <clears throat> let's get started. The first one is about the Chimera. Okay, so Chimeras. Uh, as you can see here, I got my Chimera 3 and my Chimera 5. Chimera 3 is definitely my favorite of the two. Leave that open for a sec. And we got my Chimera 5, like I said. This is the one that cut me. You can see, you might be able to see that right there. That's where it cut me. I got seven stitches. Uh, these knives are absolutely amazing. You've probably heard me say this, especially if you've seen my other Witch Bow Song Should You Buy video. Um, I always kind of say that these are the best bally's you can get for a cheap price. And that cheap price is about uh, 80 to 100 bucks new. Check GP Knives and Blade HQ for that. But uh, I always mention that if you're getting into Bally's, you should really just start here. Um, another thing I want to quickly mention is a lot of people say they don't even want to spend 100 bucks, even though I do recommend to don't even start lower than a Chimera. Because uh, if you get a real shitty knife, a real shitty Bally song, which is pretty much any knife that's under the price point of a Chimera, you really just can't find any good knives for the zero to a hundred dollar range unless it's a Chimera. It's just there really isn't many out there but if you really want to go cheaper and I'm going to talk about this later I still actually recommend the BB Barfly. Um, it's a great flipper it's going to last you forever. It's not a knife but uh, if you want to kind of feel out what flipping is going to be like I suggest getting a BB Barfly. You can get these for I think nineteen dollars on Blade HQ right now. They flip amazingly, they got a good weight, good balance, and uh, you can see whether or not you'll be into flipping just by flipping one of those. So um, I often, I'll recommend now, get a BB Barfly to just see if you're into flipping. If you are, hit up the Chimera line, because uh, these things are amazing. <clears throat> For 80 again, like I said, to $100, you can get these new. They flip stupendously. They have amazing looks, if you ask me. I think they're kind of an acquired taste. I didn't really like them at first. And then, in fact, I actually got them because I like the look of them. Uh, because I already had <clears throat> my 42 before that. You'd think, why would he go down a step to get a Chimera? I just got the Chimeras because I like the way they looked. So, um, Chimeras, they look great. They flip great. They're sharp. They're durable. They'll last you a lifetime for 100 bucks. So, Chimera, get one if you're a newbie. If you're really not sure if you like flipping, get one of these guys to test it out and then go grab a Chimera. So there's that first one. Like I said in the description, I'll put the timing in when I answered this question. So you can just click it and you can go to each part of the video. I think I actually did that in my first video as well. Um, but second question here is the Chimera versus 51. All right, so Chimera versus 51. I get this question quite a bit and this is a little bit of a harder one to answer because this kind of more boils down to what you're willing to spend and I don't really know exactly what you guys are willing to spend when you ask me these questions through PM or whatever. So <clears throat> if you're basically let's let's boil it down to this. If you're willing to spend more money and you really aren't too hesitant about spending a bit more money, 
I think the 51 for the price it is over the Chimera, which is only about $70 more than the Chimera, I think it's totally a worthy step up for the price. You get titanium liners that are jeweled blue, <clears throat> which looks sick. You get D2 stool, <laughs> D2 stool, uh, D2 tool steel, which is a really hard steel, good for EDC. If you're not in a too humid place, it shouldn't pretty much ever rust. You got that rounded spine here, which is sweet. Got a thin blade profile, which I like because it uh, improves flipping. It's also <clears throat> quite a lot of a better flipper than the Chimera, if uh, you ask me. And uh, it's longer, has a spring latch, latches really tightly closed and open. Chimeras tend to, to loosen up quite easily. So I think for 70 bucks extra, this is definitely a great step up. But if you're really not interested too much in spending the extra money, if you're really quite hesitant, you're thinking about it, but you're hesitant, I just say go for the Chimera because it's still a great flipping knife. It looks great and just all the things I said before about it, it's it's totally worth the 100 bucks. So <clears throat> again, if you're willing to spend that money easily, just go just go 51. Definitely a great deal. I still think the 51 is probably the best deal out there for any Bally on the market. Uh, that and the TAC 2 are really close, but um, these two, great knives, it's just what you're willing to spend. So you kind of have to kind of answer that one for yourself, but gave you a few points there. So that's that question. Next off, we're going to talk about trainer battle songs. All right, training knives. Now you can see I don't have any in front of me, and that's because I'm really not really a huge fan of them. I've never had one. If you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know that D42 is my first ever Bally. It's uh, my favorite flipper out there, and it's a great knife. And I learned ever since I got it how to uh, refrain from being cut. And you advanced guys will actually know that uh, the more you play with them, the more you get cut. Like uh, two years in, I get cut more often now than I did back in the day when I first started. So it's all about what you try and what you do and how you flip, and that's when you're going to get cut. So a trainer belly, I can see why people would want it if they're really scared of being cut. I was never one of those people. The only time I was really scared of being cut was right after I cut myself real bad with the K5. But uh, my suggestion for trainer ballas is to actually always just go for a real bally at first uh, and just see how that goes. If you don't like it, if you're just, you don't like the feeling of being cut, which no one does, but you just really can't handle it, just dull that bally that you got. Uh, you don't really necessarily need a trainer, you can just dull it, and that's why I'm going to recommend this. I say, since the Chimera is such a good flipper, it's such a durable flipper, it's real smooth, um, get a Chimera, something like a K2 that has a whole kind of rounded edge, or K5 here. <clears throat> See how it has a rounded edge? Just completely dull that off, and it'll look good on a, a K2 or a K5 with this leaf shape, because something like this, if you dull it off, it's going to have kind of a weird uh, rounded shape to that tanto. So if you get like a K2 or a K5, dull that right off where it won't cut you whatsoever, like completely won't cut you, you'll still probably have a nice edge kind of looking like, it'll still look like you have an edge, it won't cut you, and it'll be a great flipper. So honestly, if you want a trainer, I recommend getting a Chimera and dulling it. If you want a really cheap trainer, I again recommend the BB Barfly. Um, actually, in fact, that's probably the first thing I'd, I'd recommend you. But I think the reason why most people want trainers is because they want a knife looking balisong, and this isn't a knife looking balisong. So if you want a trainer that also looks like a knife, honestly, get a Chimera and dull it down. Alright, cheap ballies. Uh, now I talked about this a little bit, I don't want to go on too long about it. Um, We've mentioned the BB Barfly, we've mentioned the Chimera, and we've mentioned some of the Bear and Sons uh, knives. So, none of those are going to be over $100. Chimera is going to be your most expensive. Bear Ops is kind of the mid-range, and this BB Barfly here is probably the lowest. But uh, if you really, again, want to go cheap, and I did mention this uh, a lot cheaper than a Chimera, like if you want to go 20 bucks, I still I will definitely recommend the BB Barfly. It's a great flipper. It doesn't look like a knife, and that might turn you off, so um, I'm not sure where I'd recommend you from there. Probably back to a Chimera. But um, if you want to go real cheap, honestly, again, I'd uh, totally recommend the BB Barfly. These are fun to flip. 
You can flip them anywhere. Often, even though I have all these knives here, I'll come home from work, I'll grab my BB bar fly and flip that. I can do anything I want with it. I can throw it as high as I want. It's not going to break. It's a little loud, but uh, it's it's a great flipper for a great price. So honestly, cheap valley, I'd, I'd probably recommend a BB bar fly first if you want one with an edge. Um, I guess I'd have to recommend a Bear Ops, but uh, I'd really try to push you to go up and just get a Chimera. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, there really isn't too much of a middle ground. So there you go. All right, the Forex line. Now this is a hard subject to talk about because there's so many of them out there. So many people have them. So many people talk about how good they are. And they are very, very good, but I'm going to tell you right now, for what the price is they're going for, there's better options out there. So, although I don't have anything written down about specific questions about the Forex line, I'm just going to talk all about them. Hopefully, the questions you do have about them will be answered. Basically, if you don't want to know what the Forex line is, I have two of them here. We have the 42 and the 47. I'll open those for you. Um, <clears throat> these are great ballys, but like I said, there's better options out there for the price. Back in the day, they were definitely the best battle songs you could get for the price out there. Even for $280, I would still recommend the 42, probably over any knife if it was still out there now. Um, but yeah, we have the 42 here. And I'll try to get that in a decent position. We have the 42 here and the 47 right here. Get that right there, beautiful. And um, yeah, these are great, great knives. I had the opportunity to get both of these. This one while it was in production, this one um, a few years after it went out of production. This, These knives are awesome. This is my favorite looking blade shape of almost any knife. Um, and they're totally worth the money of what they used to be. $280 was a pretty good deal for this. And uh, the price they're going for now isn't. We're talking 350 to 400 for a 42, even more. Pretty much 350 to 450 for a 42. 47, we're going to be thinking uh, probably around 400 to 600. So, for what these are going for now, these are a collector's item, not really a flipper's item. Uh, you don't really get a flipper for that for that much money unless it's a full-blown custom, something like a Bally Ballistic, a Jerry Hom, uh, something like that. And then there's those other crazy customs that go for a thousand, you know, the Dobruskis and the um, freaking Marlos, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so 4X line, <clears throat> wow, I'm like losing my voice. Uh, the 4X line, is it worth it now? Definitely not. Um, but here's another question. What if you see it for 300 and it's not that bad of a shape? Um, that's a hard question. You're going to have to kind of go about that yourself. If you can tell it's really not in rough shape, I'd say 300 is a pretty good price, especially since it was 280 before it went into, into discontinuation. But uh, if someone's trying to sell you one that's really beat up for 350, 325, honestly, don't go for it because you can get something like the TAC 2, <clears throat> which is like 260 bucks, uh, the 51, which is 170 bucks. You can get those for a lot cheaper than you could a really rough shape 42. So, I say for the time being, I'd stay away from the 4X line right now. They are awesome knives. They flip well. You know, they were they were probably the best for a long time, but other Bally's have kind of come in now. Even though I like my 42 the best, I'd always kind of recommend a Tag 2 or a 51 to people who are looking for a 42-like Balasong. Um, it's just too much money to spend on something that's not amazing, but is is really, really good. It's just... Uh, this is a hard one to talk about, um, but I think you guys probably get me. Uh, there's better options out there right now. Again, the TAC-2, the 51, but um, if you find a really good deal out there, I would say go for it because it is a collector's item. You can sell it for a lot if you keep it in good condition. I'm sure they're going to go up in price steadily for pretty much as long as uh, they're discontinued. So, <laughs> yeah, um, that's all I can really say. Forex line. They're amazing. They look great. They're awesome flippers. I love my 47 and my 42. My 42 is always going to be with me. In fact, all these battle songs are going to be with me for a lifetime. I could never get rid of any of them. But uh, these ones definitely have a special place in my heart.
uh, actually these three, the 42, the, the 47, and the 51, but uh, there's definitely some sentimental values I have on these. Uh, a lot of other guys probably do as well since they've just been through so much with them. So I think that's where a lot of the hype comes from, from some of the bigger guys out there, like uh, some of the bigger flippers out there. It's just that they've had them for so long. So all the younger guys out there just think they really, really need a 4X to be a good flipper. That's totally untrue. Look at the other options first. So there's the 4X whole dealio. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about is, well, I have 51 versus Tachyon. Yeah, let's talk about that. All right, so let's talk TAC-2 for a second. Basically, uh, the TAC-2 is the second generation Tachyon. The Tachyon 1, or just the Tachyon, was out um, quite a long time ago. I don't know how long it was in production, probably not super long. I think there was around a thousand of them made or so, and they were discontinued in 2006 or 2005. I think it was 2006 they ended up being fully discontinued, but they were considered to be one of the best production battle songs out there. The TAC-2 is definitely better and is now definitely also considered one of the best production battle songs out there ever as well. So um, it's a great knife. There's quite a few variations on it right now. You can get it, uh, or at least soon you'll be able to get it in these four variations, or at least these six variations. Um, you got your Stonewash Plain, which is what I have. You got your stone wash serrated, you got your black serrated in your black plane, and now you also are able to get the um, the stone wash plane edged full handled one without any milling in it, no holes or anything. That's just going to be a little bit heavier, and it's kind of meant for people who want to customize them themselves, or maybe they just don't like these holes, or they maybe want a heavier flipper. So um, you can get the stone wash plane version of that, you can get the black plane version of that as well. So. There's six variations of the Tag 2 that are out there right now, and soon to be more. Uh, I don't know where else they've hinted this, Blade HQ, but uh, on the JDBA in the Tag 2 thread we have going over there, they recently mentioned that uh, some more variations will probably be coming out. Um, these variations will probably consist of maybe a different handle finish, different spacer type, I don't know about latch, but also different blade shape was definitely... Uh, hinted and I think you can definitely for sure say there's going to be different blade shapes and Microtech has some pretty sick blade shapes out there so you're definitely going to see me with more than one tack when the whole tack thing is is done so I love the tachyon it's my third favorite flipper and uh, let's talk about my fourth favorite flipper um, which is both the AB and the basilisk let's give a quick comparison of the tack 2 and the AB um, I've said already that I like the TAC-2 a lot more than the Alpha Beast. It's a pretty big gap between my third favorite and fourth favorite there. Uh, the Alpha Beast doesn't really suit me as much as the TAC-2. And, um, yeah, the, the Alpha Beast is about 5.1, 5.2 ounces or so. I'm not totally sure what it is. I think the Tachyon is like 4.8 or something, something like that. Either way, it's lighter. It's a little bit uh, quicker, a little bit smoother. It just suits me a lot better. Um, I like the looks of it better. I think it's a lot more comfortable in handle shape. I don't really like the design of the handles on the AB. Um, but basically, it's all about what you guys want. Do you want a lighter flipper? Do you want a heavier flipper? Do you want something that's cheaper? Or do you want something that's more expensive? I think the Tag 2 honestly kind of beats out the Alpha Beast in almost every way. Um, just for the price versus um, quality ratio type of thing. You get really good quality on both, but the prices are quite a lot different. Again, Alpha Beast is going to be about 380, whereas the TAC-2 is about 280. So the TAC-2 you get very, 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 <laughs> sorry, very, very comparable quality to the Alpha Beast while keeping the price tag a lot lower. Uh, these do flip actually fairly similar. Again, like I said, the TAC-2 is going to flip uh, quite a lot quicker. It has better tolerances. It's also a lot smoother. And I was actually thinking about this last night. Um, often with battle songs, I get this kind of feeling where if it feels smoother, if it makes less noise, I actually flip better. Um, it's kind of weird. It's like the feeling I used to have. I used to play 
a fair bit of guitar. Um, I'd take these lessons and in the class you'd have this really, really crappy amp. It was this little PV Rage. They're really tiny amps. They're like, sorry, they're like that big. Um, and then at home we had a pretty good one. Me and my brother both played. And whenever I was at my little lesson, I could never play as good just because of the sound that came out of the amp. Like my hands literally wouldn't move and I wouldn't be able to play as good. Um, with my actual hands, like my technique wasn't as good because of the sound that came out of the amp. I don't know if other people have felt that, but it's actually kind of similar to the ballad song. Just the way the the basilisk kind of feels in my hand, the way it kind of uh, the ergonomics are, I just can't flip it as well as I can my tack. My tack just feels so comfortable. Um, it feels like it's always oiled. It's so smooth. The tolerances are great and I can just flip it better. I don't know if it's because of the balances, just my preferences, but I think a lot of it comes down to ergonomics and just smoothness of the knife. So, um, again guys, sorry for rambling, but it comes down to preferences. I'm just going to mention this one more time. Uh, are you willing to spend the extra money for the Alpha Beast if you're really into it over the TAC 2? Um, are you a flipper who is kind of like me? Do you like um, a lighter belly that's going to go quicker? that may not have as good balance as something like this, but it still has very, very comparable balance. Um, so it, it's all about the, the pros and the cons and what you think is worth it. So I think the, the TAC-2 is better in almost every way than the Alpha Beast, but that's just me. Um, you guys kind of have to do some research on your own, watch my reviews, watch other people's reviews, maybe other people's comparisons between the TAC-2 and the AB, and just go from there. So that's TAC-2 versus AB. Um, how about TAC-2 versus 51? Hmm. Okay, so this next comparison is going to be quite a lot like our last, and that is the TAC-2 versus, uh, versus 51. Okay, there it goes in focus. <laughs> I was wondering how that was taking so long. Um, yeah, like I said, this is going to be quite a bit like our last one in the sense that the the uh, 51 is going to kind of take place of the TAC-2 in our last comparison. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about in a second. Basically, the Alpha Beast is $100 more than the TAC-2, and the TAC-2 is about $100 more than the 51. So, um, again, it's going to kind of be boiled down to whether or not you're willing to spend the amount of money to get something that you may think is better. Um, so like I said, yeah, the 51 is kind of going to take place of the TAC-2 in our last comparison. Um, it's going to have the same kind of arguments. Do you like a lighter flipper or do you like the heavier flipper, 51 versus TAC-2? Um, do you like the style of the 51 or do you like the style of the TAC-2? Uh, the TAC-2 is going to be better tolerances than the 51. Uh, the 51 is going to be lighter, less controllable. TAC-2 is going to be more controllable. Uh, the 51 has a better latch system, has a spring latch, has titanium, looks really good. Um, I can't decide on which one I actually like the looks of better. But again, it's going to kind of boil down to preferences. I like a lighter flipper. The 51 is borderline too light, so I think the reason why I like the 51 better for flipping than the TAC-2 is just because of the sheer extent of how long I've had it. The 51 was my second blade after my 42. So I've been flipping this thing forever, like for the last three, four years I've had it. So um, I've put so many hours into it, and I think that's kind of the reason why I like it so much. But both of these are smoking deals. Um, TAC-2, again, is about 280. Uh, you can probably still find it for 260, and the, uh, the 51 is about 170 to 180 as well. So they're about $100 from each other, um, and they're both great, great flippers. So... If you're kind of more starting off and you're willing to spend a lot of money, I would go for the TAC-2 because it's it's going to be better suited for flipping, no doubt, than the 51. Um, but again, like I said, I think I like the 51 for flipping better than the TAC-2 just because of the sheer extent of how long I've had it. So um, if you're looking for a better flipper, I think the TAC-2 is quite a lot better. But um, if you're almost exactly like me, you'll like the 51 better. So you're really going to have to go off your own preferences. If you've flipped heavier knives in the past, you'll probably like to tack to a lot more. If you're brand, brand new to flipping, I would definitely recommend the 51 if you want to go a step above the Chimera. 
So, I mean, there's not a ton more points I can really give you. It's all about price versus quality, um, how much you want to spend, what you like in flipping, and what you don't like in flipping. So, um, check out my reviews on both of these if I didn't give you enough info right here. But again, if you like a lighter flipper, 51 may be better for you. If you like a more balanced, kind of slower flipper with still a great deal of speed, TAC 2 is going to be better. Um, so yeah, basically for $100 more, you're going to get a better flipper. It's going to be full titanium. It looks sick. Um, but maybe you just don't like it as much as the 51. So again, go with your gut. Okay, so I have BB Barfly here written on my list, so I might as well just talk about it, just give it a little dedicated portion, even though I've said quite a few things about it already. But I'm just going to mention those things again all into one condensed little portion here. Um, here's my BB Barfly. This is one I got from Brian Becker when I did the whole Dragon's Den thing with him. You guys can check out that video. Uh, it was basically where I auditioned with them to get on a show about inventors and stuff. Um, you guys can watch that video, I'm not going to talk about it here. But um, I just wanted to make this dedicated portion about the BB Barfly just because there's so many great attributes about it um, that's totally worth the money. So you can open a beer with it. <laughs> that's the main purpose. So that is totally awesome right there. But the second thing is, and this video is about flipping, um, is, uh, is that it's a good flipper. It's a great flipper for the price. We're talking 20 bucks. Um, kind of like 25-ish, I think, or so, if you want it customized uh, for yourself. But uh, about 20 bucks if you just get kind of a, a normal one pre-designed already. And it flips amazingly. Uh, it's completely durable. And it's a great substitute for a trainer. A great balisong for people who, like I said in that kind of cheap balisong section we had, it's it's a great balisong for people who don't want to spend hundred bucks on a Chimera or 160 bucks on a 51 and who don't want something like a Baron Sons that might just snap or another kind of CCC that'll totally break no matter what um, so this thing it's not gonna break on you it flips good you're not gonna get cut you can try pretty much anything with you want or that you want with it and it's not gonna it's not gonna break like I've literally I don't know why I did this I never do torture tests on things but with my original Calvin Nation Bally it's way on the other side of the house right now, but uh, um, I took it outside. I, I often go outside for walks, and I'll take my BB Barfly with me because I don't care if it falls on rocks or mud or whatever. And instead of flipping it, I decided to just throw it around. I was whipping it at trees. I was literally throwing it as high as I possibly could. And there's almost no difference between the, the play and the flippability of this one, which is brand new, and the one that I originally had, the, the Calvin Nation one. So... Um, this thing is amazing. I say definitely get it if you're into beer and you're into ballast songs. Get one of these regardless of whether you're looking for a flipper or a trainer or whatever. But this also makes a great trainer, a great flipper, and a great cheap place to start, especially if you're just looking into getting into flipping and that's it. Like, a lot of people have come to me with that question is, I don't know if I'm going to like flipping, should I get a good ballast song or should I just get a real shitty one? So I always recommend to get the Chimera, but now I'll probably recommend this because uh, there's always a chance that you get a real shitty knife and the reason why you get turned off from flipping is because it breaks and maybe it because it cuts you because of how crappy it is. So this isn't going to cut you. It's going to give you a good idea of what flipping is about, what kind of moves you can do, and um, then you can go up from there. So. There you go. And you can open a beer with it. So, freaking, I love these things. They're great. Uh, that's it for that one. Okay, so the next question is, like I said, small fly versus 32. Basically, all I'm going to do is say which knife I like better of the two, and then send you off to go watch a two-part video comparison I did on the two, the small fly versus the 32. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to tell you quickly which one I like better, give a quick rundown on why I like it better, and then send you off to go watch those if this is a question you have, if you really want to answer it uh, in really great detail. So, um, like I said, I like the small fly the best. Reasons for that is just the sheer uniqueness of it. I think it looks absolutely amazing, especially in blue, and you can get it in a few different colors. Um, but I really love the plate shape, very, very unique. I love the, the sandwich design, the high polish there. 
um, the cool spacers, the really cool latch, even though it doesn't latch in an open position. But basically, it's the uniqueness of this knife, and that is why I like it better than the 32. Um, I have also mentioned that this is a better flipper than the 32, which I still stand by. So that's obviously another huge reason to get the 30. Uh, sorry, the small fly over the 32. But um, I'm not going to talk about flipping here. But flipping is going to be a whole preference-based system, right? So check out my comparison video on why um, or which bow song you might think is a better flipper. But I think this is a better flipper. It looks cooler. It's just way more unique than the 32, so that's the reason why I would get this over the 32. But again, check out the comparison on on that to see more about it. I'm just going to give you a quick look at the 32. But you got to love the 32 as well. I mean, it's really quite close. Get that in focus, come on. So, these are both amazing ballad songs really love both of them. If you are if you really like them, I just say get both. The 32 also has better tolerances. Just a barely, but uh, yeah. So that's that question. Okay, so um, next question here. Protec Fly Father. I think yesterday might have been the first time I ever even got a question about this. This is a cool knife. Um, I'm gonna quickly post a, a little picture of it here so you can see what it's like. But uh, it's very expensive, so if you're coming at this video from a flipper's point of view, I'd say absolutely stay away from it. Um, I can't tell you exactly why it's not a great flipper, but I think just looking at other people's pictures, other videos of it, you'll kind of know why. I mean, it's a pretty light knife, it's got barrel spacers, I kind of like the TAC-2, and obviously it's a worse flipper than the TAC-2. Um, but I can't give you too much opinions on the flippability. But I know people have mentioned it's not the best out there. Obviously, it's not going to be the worst either. But for around 600 or 700 bucks or whatever it is, it's definitely not worth it from a flipper's point of view. If you're a collector, um, obviously I can't decide for you. If you're a collector, you'll probably get it anyway because you guys are crazy <laughs> spending all this money on stuff. Um, you guys probably think I'm crazy, which I kind of am, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, but yeah, if you're a collector, this was a cool knife. I definitely recommend it, but I can't really give any opinions to collectors because they just do whatever. Um, but I'm going at this from a flipper's point of view, so flippers, stay away from it. If you really, really love the look of it, uh, it's a cool knife. I would get it if I had a lot of money. I think it's a really, really cool knife. So there's a Protec Fly Father for you. Next question. Okay, so the next question is which bally is missing from this picture? Yep, you guessed it. That's the uh, the 53. This is a Marlowe Benchmade collaboration. This was a design from Charles Marlowe, which was the Mongoose, I believe. I've talked about this in the review of it. And uh, Benchmade kind of changed it up. They did a G10 version of it. The original one, I believe, was titanium. Uh, but it's basically the exact same thing. Oops, I'm way out of the picture there. But in G10. So I think it is a really cool looking knife. I like the design, I like the blade shape, I like the Marlowe symbol on there, but uh, basically this bally is meant for EDC and nothing else. It's a terrible flipper. You actually almost are physically unable to do things like chaplains and rollovers. Um, so I'm going to compare that quickly with the Mayhem and which one you should get out of those two. Basically it's going to be kind of like the 32 small fly deal where I just say basically what one I like, and then just to go do some of your own research on it. Uh, the Mayhem is my preferred one, but it is a lot more expensive, and that is the reason why I got the 53. The um, reason why I like Mayhem better is it's full titanium. I think it looks... I think the, the looks are comparable. I, I like both of them probably equally, but I like the spring latch on the Mayhem. I like S30V better. That's the steel they use. I like the titanium. And it's probably a little bit better of a flipper of the two, even though they both suck. They both are almost physically unable to do chaplains and rollovers. Uh, but yeah, the Mayhem, I think, just kind of looks cooler and I think would be better for EDC than the uh, the 53. Um, but they're both cool knives. That's essentially what I like about the, uh, the Mayhem better. But if you're looking for an EDC Bally, um, and actually I had this other question listed farther down and that was just EDC Balasong so I'll probably just talk about that right now as well 
Um, but if you're looking for an EDC Bally with the same kind of design, uh, a similar design as the 53 or the Mayhem, I'd suggest going for the Mayhem if you're not cautious about spending the extra money, which is like 230 bucks or something. Uh, if you want to keep it down and you like the design of something like the Mayhem or the 53, I'd get the, the 53. But if you're looking just for a strictly EDC Bally, honestly, I'd recommend the Small Fly as my number one choice. It's a small knife. It's really light. Flips great. Um, you can get it out real quick. It's got an amazing design. You know, that nice uh, leaf recurve kind of blade shape for EDC. I really love that. It's got a pocket clip so you can easily carry it. And uh, the one negative is that it doesn't lock in open position. But honestly, I would never ever lock it in open position if I was using it for EDC. Um, I think a lot of people will probably agree with that. Uh, with me on that one because when you open it I just open it your hand locks it into place and then you don't have to physically unlock it to close it you just use it um, I'm sorry mine's pretty tight right now and then just close it and you can lock it from there so if I were to suggest any ballast song for EDC I would recommend the small fly then the 32 which is also amazing for uh, EDC Blade shape I don't think is quite as good for EDC depending on what you want to use it for, but it's got that nice pocket clip, rides fairly deep, quite a bit deeper than the small fly, um, easy to open, very very light, lighter than the small fly in fact, so um, EDC, these are both great options to go for, but I'm also a style and EDC kind of guy, so I would like to carry this one more than the small fly. But uh, honestly, now thinking about it a little bit more, I'd think uh, if you're strictly EDC, the small fly, or sorry, the 32 is probably the best way to go. So <laughs> I know kind of a change there, but uh, 32, I think if you're looking for EDC, is the best way to go. Um, and uh, also, if you're looking for a bigger EDC, the 51 would probably be the second best way to go. But uh, for small EDC, I'd say go with the 32. If not, go for the small fly for. Uh, a full-sized ballast song for EDC, I'd go 51, and then um, from there that'd be really kind of hard to uh, to say from there. Um, probably again, maybe go up to a Mayhem, and honestly, if you look at pretty much any ballet, they're all pretty good for EDC anyway. Even the Tac too. I mean, I could see myself EDCing that. It's a little heavy and it doesn't have a pocket clip, but uh, why not, right? So even though, especially being in Canada, I don't have a lot of uh, experience with EDCing a ballast song, that's uh, my opinions on that one, so uh, there you go. This is the last topic I've kind of written down, and uh, hopefully you guys have been clicking in the description to, to find the stuff that applies to you, because if you watch this whole video, man, you guys have some serious um, kahunis. Your kahunis are actually probably gone because you've been sitting down so long watching this. My knees are totally screwed up now. I've been sitting on my knees for like two hours. They're killing me. I got up one time to transfer these onto my computer because my memory card actually filled up. I could barely walk. So props to you guys who've been watching this. I really appreciate it. Hopefully all the questions I've answered so far have been helpful. And here's the last one. <clears throat> all I've written down was uh, BM62. And then I have Versus 51, TAC2, 4x etc. So I'll talk a little bit about this. I only have 10 minutes left on my camera, so we'll see how far I get. Um, so yeah, 6x line. Originally, when I saw this, I believe it was January 1st of 2012. They released a picture on it. I thought that's cool. This is going to be a titanium version of the 42, uh, same length, but it just has a spacer instead of a full channel, which would make it a better flipper. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was going to be a better flipper than the 42. It was basically just a sandwich 42. But then I looked at it a little bit more closely and my fears became uh, true, which was that it was a stainless steel knife. It was also shorter, didn't have a spring latch. Um, and yeah, so that's what became true. Uh, obviously it is stainless steel. It's very heavy. It doesn't flip anything like a 4X. It doesn't have a spring latch, which I actually don't have on and um, it's a lot shorter so the combination of it being heavier and shorter makes it really absolutely a terrible flipper compared to the 42 
if you're one of those traditional guys who likes the 6 plus ounce ballys, you actually might like this. The balance isn't really that good at all. Uh, I find flipping to be fairly hard. A lot of moves just kind of go really sluggishly around uh, your hand and it's not even because it's so heavy. It's that just the balance is so out of whack. Like uh, it's so handle heavy that sometimes when you're just flipping it around it, it just kind of it goes around oddly. Sometimes it kind of binds or goes slow or sometimes it kind of flips off real fast. Chaplains feel kind of weird. It, it just feels weird. It's not a good flipper. So um, I originally thought and still kind of think this, I, I think the 62 is kind of an abuse of a market. Originally when I saw it I thought maybe this is like the 42 and I thought when they hinted at having another 42 like knife on their Facebook page they were going to make a titanium like knife. Uh, maybe something that just flips like it, maybe it looks like it, and I actually even thought maybe they'll release a sandwich version of the 42. And they did, but it was stainless steel. So I think because they used the cheaper material, didn't really decrease the price a whole, whole lot, making it an absolutely horrendous flipper compared to the 4X line. I just think it was kind of an abuse of a market. Just I think they were kind of thinking of all the, the maybe the kids who look up to guys kind of like me, like the flippers, who really, really respect and love the 42. Um, they see the 62 come out, they don't really know the difference between stainless steel and titanium. Maybe they just like the looks of it and they want something that's like the 42. Uh, all they're going to get is something that looks kind of like the 42. They're not going to get something that flips anywhere close to it. If, if this had a different shape, I mean, it would be a completely, completely different ballot song than the 42. There's absolutely no similarities in the way it flips at all. Um, so keep that in mind if you're looking to buy the 62. If you think you like it or you're going to like it because it'll flip like the 42, then you know you're dead wrong. Uh, you can see there that's a little bit shorter. It's stainless steel. Um, the only reason why I got it is just to see how it flipped. You know, I'm kind of a collector and a flipper. And, you know, it does look super good. Uh, let's give you a quick look on it real closely. I mean, it looks amazing. It's a little bit different than the 42. Uh, it's got a little bit smaller holes, I think. And it's got a nice polish on the stainless steel. And stainless steel does hold the polish way better than titanium. So fit and finish is its really superb compared to the 42. But it's just not going to flip anywhere close to a 42. So keep that in mind. And uh, compared to the other knives out there, again for the price, the TAC-2, so much better. Not getting to get into reasons why, but it's so much better. And uh, it's only a few bucks cheap, uh, more expensive. And then you got your 51, which is uh, quite a bit cheaper and is a better flipper. Looks really good. It's going to perform really good. Better for EDC. It's just, it's a better knife. It's got a spring latch. It's cheaper. And then, again, like I said, there's the TAC-2, which is better. Um, I mean, there's so many more better options out there for the price. The only reason why you're going to get a 6X line is because you like the looks of it. Or you're a real classic, heavy-duty, 6-plus ounce knife flipper, and uh, you know, you're know you kind of old school that way. So uh, there's the reasons why you get the 62, and, and more specifically the reasons why you wouldn't get the 62. And that, guys, that's my final question. Now, my battery is flashing. So if I get cut off here, I probably won't turn it back on to give you a, a farewell. But if it doesn't cut out, hopefully. Thank you guys for watching. Take it easy. I really hope you appreciated this video. I hope it uh, reaches out to a, a broad community of people looking to be flippers or to uh, start getting into battle songs. And hopefully your questions were answered. So thanks for watching. Take it easy, guys.